and more better. Hey, man. Yes. And gooder and gooder. Coming up on today's show, we pulled up in the parking lot and almost passed out. But we're going to tell y'all why later. But let's just say RS Luxury Rentals is in the, in building. the building tonight, y'all. And we're going to talk all about it. Yes. Yeah, okay? yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And. Rave talk. That's what I saw. <laughs> What's that called? Rave talk. Okay. I don't know nothing about that, but I'm going to learn today. Um, we've also got a, big boy a woman who um, is, is a new author. And um, she's an amazing woman. She's got an amazing story to tell. Very much. Yes. And joining us later via Zoom is none other than Mika Morris. I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited. Who else we, we got? We also have one of the, I call these types of um, people serial entrepreneurs, right? Because they are doing not just one about. thing, not just two things, not oh, just three things. things, some really, really amazing things in the community and um, also just for our people. So I want to welcome to the show serial entrepreneur Jermaine Smith. Hey. Yes. For sure. And guess what, y'all? What we got? We got a closer. We got a closer? Every week we got, is we got fire for you. Some it's more heat. heat. Listen, this is Spotlight Family, okay? He's been on the show before, and, and whenever you all see Spotlight Family come back, you already know what it is. We, we They rock. back yeah. is because he is lit. He is one of the best out there, and I cannot wait for you all to hear what he has for us later to close too. the show. It's sexy, right? it's sexy too. Y'all, welcome back to the show. Edward Martin hey. Jr. Hey. Woo! Let's get into it. Yes, y'all ready? Y'all ready for a show? Let's do it. I Ready? What's happening? What you got? UBM, we always like to tell y'all how we look so amazing every week up here is because we have an amazing team here. Our UBM gang gang is always, always making sure that Stan and I are up here looking good. So thank you all so much. You broadcast media. Um, if you are looking to do a show or something, check us out. You broadcast yeah, yeah. media, y'all. Gang gang. What else is going on? Shout out on? to the whole crew. Um, I want to dedicate this show to my main man, Harvey. Shout out to Harvey. Um, R.I.P. to Harvey. Um, I didn't find out till way Harvey, later. Harvey, Harvey Fuqua. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Harvey Fuqua. Didn't find out that he had passed away until way later um, in, in the time. So I, I just want to dedicate the show to him and say he was one of the most amazing human beings that I had met in quite some time. When I met Harvey, I didn't know who he was. I was there to get a song cleared. And um, he was a part of uh, Motown in the early sense where it was Hitsville. I'm not old enough to even know. Did you know that? Did you I, know it was Hitsville before it was Motown? I, I heard about it because I watched those shows on TV. So he traded some stories with me. And basically he was telling me that he, was, he had a group called the Moon Glows. He knew I was a Marvin Gaye fan. So we say, man, I got a story for you. He said, I used to have a group called the Moon Glows. And I would get Harvey to come. I mean, I'm sorry, Marvin Gaye to come and sit in on a on the band and sing to give him notoriety. And I ended up introducing uh, Marvin Gaye to uh, uh, Barry Gordy. So I thought that was pretty dope. And we, you know, we had some other things that he was talking about, how he ran around with uh, his friends today, Smokey Robinson, Gladys Knight and all that. So he had made a lot of way for a lot of people, um, including a lot of people. And so Motown was uh, mentioned a lot. Little secret stories that we couldn't talk about. So shout out to you, Harvey, and your family, R.I.P. to Harvey and, and Antoine Fuqua is his nephew. And he was going to shoot the movie. He called yeah. me Blackbird. Mm -hmm. And so because Harvey passed away untimely, we didn't get a chance to put it together. So I just thought that was a pretty dope situation. Well, thank you that for I'm that, in. baby. Thank you. Harvey Fuqua. Yeah, I'm Mr. Never... Harvey Fuqua. You look him up. He was a bad boy. Okay. Well, sure. thank you for that. You want to talk about your book? You want to leave right now? Of course. That? Well, this is my testimony, you guys. For those who don't know, Against This Cry is my testimony. Um, it's on. It's available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and all the platforms. Please go out and support. Um, soon to be a movie. Uh, so Far Removed is the title of that movie. And um, it's going to be way different than a book, but a grip, a gripping tale. Absolutely, y'all. So stay tuned. It's going to be really a good situation. So please stay is. tuned, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Me too. I'm excited for my I'm honey. excited about you doing some things, too. So Wifey doesn't talk about her project, but she has <laughs> something called Trauma to Triumph, um, and she's doing an amazing job with it. It's a mental health piece slash a lot of other things, and it's really dope. So it's a women who are being addressed about their uh, traumatic situations and how they turned it into a... Uh, triumph and mm -hmm. so um shout out to all of those who's involved with that project you guys were filming saturday and we yesterday were, and it, yeah yesterday and i mean not saturday yesterday mm -hmm. and um it was pretty dope and i just was it's a pleasure to see you do your thing and reach for new heights and oh, you know go you, to honey. a new lane and it's sexy i like it thank you punkin yeah keep doing that i Yay. like that hey 
Keep I going. just love him, keep y'all. Going. Hey. No, you keep going. You it's about you. You keep going. <laughs> Thank right, you, so baby. Let's talk about it. Thank you. Um, also, um, we 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 participated as media this past weekend in Black Golfers Weekend. It's the first annual weekend dedicated to black golf and black teaching youth black golf and Dope. women getting involved in play, black women getting Dope. in played in golf Dope. listen y'all it was so amazing it kicked off last friday it ran all through the weekend we wrapped it up at carolina kitchen shout out to don moss and lance london over there we, gang, we gang. wrapped it up on sunday over there um steven johnson amy you all really 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 and lawanda y'all really did your thing it was black Dope. golfers weekend a lot of attention a lot of good feedback yes. a lot of great sponsors of reaching out it's going to be even it's more dope be so next big, year y'all. and um so this was just the first annual yes. we thought it was real dope um what was even more dope they end up kicking it with us on a personal note <laughs> yeah end up chilling at the crib and we you know ate some crabs and busted down but it was more of a meeting um you know it was a really a powerful it was meeting. very nice so y'all we had so a really good stay tuned situation. we got some other they, they things coming with black golfers stuff. y'all a lot, a lot of, of good stuff. stuff just remember we so we told you first all right. Also, we um, I participated in the Polo Jazz event out way out in Poolsville, Maryland. But Susan Smallwood, Grandiosity, killed y'all it. killed it. Killed it. I loved being around us black people, black women and men on horses playing the game of polo that I have known nothing. I don't know <laughs> nothing about it, but I, but it was, I cool, was right? into it. Yes, it was very cool to see. Everybody was dressed really nicely. The food was great. The entertainment was great. Lisa Ray was there. We were celebrating her birthday. Um, we had Tony Terry perform. It was just, re- uh, it was so nice. And I the just energy. wanted to, sh- the, the energy was infectious. And I had a, a VIP sponsor table for Trauma to Triumph. And there were so many yeah, other trauma. amazing philanthrop- <laughs> philanthropists and um, sponsors there. 5,000 a table. Listen, I'm not talking about that part, but I just want to say how amazing it was. And it was to benefit black mental health. So I just wanted to shout out Susan Smallwood for doing her thing. And so Great not job. just that, Susan Smallwood is the first black owned caviar, yes. black owned caviar in the world. Yes. Right. First Absolutely. ever. So ever. she's super grandiose. Yes. And she does everything over the top. But we love it. Um, We got vibe at. Uh, Union Oyster Bar and Grill tomorrow night um, with uh, CG Entertainment and J&J and J Entertainment Group. So y'all check Vibe out tomorrow evening. Jamie and the gang. Jamie and the gang will be there. Um, Stan and I will be hosting the Tab Awards on Saturday with Elder Ke- Kevin Hart and his amazing team. is It's sold out, so if you didn't get tickets, we're sorry about that. But, but we it's will. Gr- it's great. It's going to be great, it's and great we event. are hosting it. And then on God, Sunday, is- y'all, the Washington Commanders are down there in Dallas, Texas with America's team, the Cowboys. Who? At America, you heard what I said. Oh, wait. America's team is the cow. Google it. So, so ju- do me a favor. Google, put in your Google thing. Well, say I'm a- saying, America's, America's team. team. You represent and tell America, me what comes up. Right? That's all I'm saying. Well, maybe Google y'all it. do really represent America because the way it's looking. It. Okay. So uh, Jamie and uh, J and J Entertainment is they are doing some amazing parties down there in Dallas. Stan and I can't go because we are otherwise committed. But Vibe is gonna be down there. Everybody in Dallas, Texas, except me and Stan. But it's okay. We yep, you guys be saving joy, and it's gonna be a tough game. I don't know. I think y'all might get an L, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, also, I wanted to remind you all that Spotlight Over the City is always, always welcoming um, new sponsors. New, if you want to advertise on our show, sponsor on our show, please email us info at at spotlightoverthecity.com. Yes. Info at spotlightoverthecity.com. We would love to um ha- have you as part of Spotlight's Partner team. with us. We Partner have with great us, y'all. packages, several. We have three actually great packages, and um they are inexpensive, and they're very, very affordable. So I and think, you can just donate, too. We, we, we can donate, too, yeah, if you want. But, we, but if you have a business, we would love to spotlight it and put it in. We do three for free. But we would love to have you partner with us every week. So Absolutely. Um, speaking of black businesses, you all know we love our black businesses here at Spotlight Over the City. And if you have a black business or you know a reputable black business and you would like us to shout them out on a reputable, future show, Rep- reputable black business, send us an email for that as well. Our email address is info at spotlightoverthecity.com. We will shout out black businesses. Um, that's our way that we give back to the community. So let us know about that. Today's black business you shout out. Too. I was just looking at you. Was you were? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you was looking. Yeah, I was. Well, I, I, yeah. I see you. Keep yeah, going. I'm looking at it. It's quick. I see. Keep going. Um, <laughs> um, you made me mess with it. I see. Keep going. Um, <laughs> um, you made me mess up. I messed you up. Okay, yeah, black yeah. businesses. You threw me off. Diamond Liquids Catering. They were out on Saturday at the Polo 
and Jazz Fest, and I promised them that I would shout them out. They have a, a, a brick and mortar over in District Heights slash Capital Heights, Maryland, and it's called Diamond Liquids Catering. Their Instagram is Diamond Liquids Catering, and they do mostly Caribbean food. I had the jerk chicken with rice and peas and cabbage, and I had, because I'm greedy, I also had the the curry chicken because I got hungry later in the event. So I got hungry early and then later. So I had, you bought both of them and just I had the, the curry stash, chicken the and the jerk chicken, and both of them were very, very good. So I wanted to shout you all out. Y'all, check them out on Instagram, Diamond Liquids Catering. And if you're ever in Capitol Heights or District Heights, check them out. Also, um, with just one word, this is one of my amazing women from the Trauma to Triumph Project, Tony Marie. She is opening, she started her new business, and she's um, got these very nice coffee mugs and just, um, just one item, one word items. And it just says things like happy, love, you know, those types of inspiring words um, can really lift your spirit sometimes. And you Sex. Can, <laughs> yes. I to read. I just sex. This. Yes. Sex. Uh, that's a good word too. <laughs> www.withjustoneword.com is her website. The Instagram is with w i t h dot just one word. Um, I'm very very proud of what you're doing, Tony Marie. Keep up the good work, please. I'm, I'm proud so of proud. all of, all of our black entrepreneurs. When I say love, 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 I know it's not easy. Definitely, we make it look easy, but it's hard. And so, um, support your black businesses. Go to your local business. Support. And stop acting like they owe you when you go in there. Pay the money. Like That's you right, do to baby. your white counterparts. Pay the money. Pay All the right. Food. Name that song. You ready? Let's get it. Y'all, we do a segment called Name That Song, where we sing, song? we sing a few bars of a song, and you have to guess the name of the song and the artist. And then you can be winner, winner, chicken dinner. We got spotlight T-shirts, spotlight these mug things. So you might can win something really nice, a nice, nice little spotlight gift. But you have to guess the name of the song and the artist, okay? All right. Are so you ready? You, well, mine is kind of easy this time because I picked the artist that I picked the song from one of my favorite in the world artists. But I had to wet my whistle I, real I quick. I picked one that was kind of not like you ain't need your vocal vocals because I ain't want to play with him. So yeah. <coughs> oh, I ain't want to do them like that. But oh. yeah. Okay. What you, you got? Wait a minute. Right. No, wait. wait. Now you you want me? You sure you good? I'm good. You I need just, something? <clears throat> All right. No, wait. All right. You need me to okay, wait. bang on the no, table? No, you making me mess up my th my thoughts right, process. Oh um, wait. Um. <clears throat> Like my morning star, hey, shining brightly beside me. Don't, 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 don't. And if we keep this love, we will last through all eternity. Don't, 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 don't. don't. Just the way we are, I love it, love it. Right. Y'all know my not y'all. Who hey, knows the name of the song and the artist? Do well, we I think I know the name of the song, but I don't know the artist. But I can't participate. Let's what y'all got? Facebook, what you got? Let's what y'all got out Does there? Anybody, anybody the got it? Know what I sang? <laughs> you know? <laughs> nope. No? Nope. Hold up. Edward. Do you know the, the song? My love. Our love. Our love. Our love. Who sang it? Um, anybody else? You don't know? Jermaine, you know? I can't participate, huh? Oh, 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 Nanny Cole. Yes, girl! <laughs> but what's the name of the song? Um, Charles the Trees. No. That's Somebody said it already. Somebody said it. Our love. <laughs> <laughs> but she on it, though. Yes, Natalie Cole. Yes. There you go. Our That's love. it. Okay. Our love. It's our love, passion. right? Hey, acting new passion. Send me a DM so you can get your so you can get your spotlight. So check. we had it. Um, DC. Well, let's see. Acting new passion. Guessed it first on on the Instagram live. Yes, y'all. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. It is our love, Natalie Cole. Right. You ready for the voice I, to make so, the old lady's voice? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. So this is, like I say, one of my favorite artists in the whole world, I won't say. But I got top five dead alive. What's your top five dead alive? Top five what? R&B singers. Dead alive. Top five dead alive. Donnie Hathaway, Phyllis Hyman, Whitney Houston. It could Steve, be a group, too. Stevie Wonder and um, um, mm, Jasmine Sullivan. Those are my That's top five. That's your top five? five? Yes. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. I just gave I them to you. Most of mine are dead. Marvin Gaye, the home team. Stevie Wonder. 
We uh, both the said Stevie Wonder. That's not a singer. The, uh, that's a group. Go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, don't do that. The OJs. That's and... a group. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What are you doing? I so thought you said So the famous. Ozzy Brothers, and then and then my last one would be uh 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 Irwin and Five. Top okay, five that's good. That's, that's good. That's good, babe. That's good. So we what got you one got? right here. What you got? Looking back on when I was a little nappy-headed uh, boy. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> then my only worry mm. was for Christmas what would be my toy. Uh, uh, uh. I got it, babe. Hey, uh, even uh, though we sometimes would not get a thing, hey. we were happy with the joy that they would yeah, bring. Sneaking okay. out the back door, okay. hang out with the uh, uh, little uh, friends It's a few of mine. bars, a few bars. Uh, All right. Yes, so, you did good, though. Y'all, y'all better I'm give it up for my though. sexual attraction. I, 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 yes! I, 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 I ain't want to do him no injustice. You did. But when I, I'm going to tell you something right now. When I got that Good. double album, my cousin Cindy Leggett gave me a Songs in a Kid Life joint. And when I told you, when I first listened to it, I was probably like eight, nine. And when I heard it, I fell in love with music. So this is the first artist that made me say, man, music can change the world for you. And so it was this guy. So you, I don't know yeah, that y'all going to know this because it's a way, way, way Everybody back. done guessed that. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. They yeah, but they don't know the name of the song. They guessed Stevie Wonder on there. Well, damn. Yeah, James, I, one of our sponsors, James. Hey, James, Oxley. one time for my main man, James. Shout out for Oxley Real. How yes. No, nah, he said looking back. You ain't get it. Well, he right said Stevie Wonder. Yeah, everybody knew and that, DC, but no. And DC, DC. He didn't get Curry it either. Said Stevie Wonder. All right, we got to get yeah, ready. Yeah, they didn't get the name of the we song. We got a quick so it's called I Wish. Break. I Wish. And right, then we we're coming back, y'all, with Spotlight News. Yep, yep, we'll be right back. Spotlight over the city. And, um, y'all having a good time? Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, man. Yes, so we y'all. Got news, we, y'all. Got we got, some, we got, a, we got a little bit of news for y'all tonight. Got? But shout out to James Oxley of Oxley Realty Group. He's one of our spotlight sponsors, and we love him. Yeah, he, shout out to Oxley Realty yep. Group. Shout out. After more than 25 years in business, y'all, Sweetie Pies is closing its doors in St. Louis mm. following the recent conviction of her son, James, Timothy Norman, who murdered, y'all remember this story, he murdered Sweetie Pies, he murdered Sweetie Pies' grandson. Sweetie Pies' name is Robbie Montgomery, by the way. Um, Tim Norman, who's Sweetie Pies' son, so follow the story. Her son murdered his his nephew, oh, which his is Sweetie nephew. Pie's grandson, named Andre Montgomery Jr., okay? Yeah, that was a few years ago, right? Y'all know Sweetie Pie's restaurant was made famous um, on the OWN Network. She had a reality show called Welcome to Sweetie Pie's, and it ran for nine seasons. But then her, her son, Tim, had to get greedy and mess everything up, and he had a murder-for-hire plot to kill his daggone nephew, and he was successful. Um, and now he's going to spend some real time in prison. He has been convicted of murder, and um, and he wanted to collect the life insurance money. And I'm just, it just still sickens my stomach when I think about that. So, so it was Robbie who he killed, right? No, Robbie is Sweetie Pie. So who's the he little young guy? He killed Andre Montgomery. Andre, okay, Andre the is guy. the young guy that he yeah. killed, which is which was his nephew and Sweetie Pie's grandson. We're talking four hundred something thousand dollars. He put a hit up. 
listen, I don't know how much it was, but I don't care. I don't give a damn if it was a million, two million, four million. You don't kill your nephew to collect on the life insurance money. But I'm just money. telling you, that's how much short money it was. We talking 400000 Yeah. Not so, 400 million, none of that. So anyway, um, they are closing the doors, and sorry to see that happen. Um, they were in business for 25 years. Earlier this month, New Orleans rap star Mystical, shake it fast, him right there. Watch yourself. Uh-huh. Was formerly, he'd been watching too many shaking it fast ass because he was formerly charged with first degree <laughs> rape. Allegedly. Again, allegedly, for an, it says, for an incident that allegedly occurred um, in his home this summer. So we have been uncovering more facts about this situation. And the, the victim is saying that Mystical made her pray with him before he sexually assaulted her. He's if this is true, he is crazier than I thought he was. If it's true, yeah, allegedly. If it's so true. So we don't know, but yeah, that's But we do wild. know that the he charges spent, a while. We, we do know, know he already was convicted before. He spent time in prison for raping someone. And so we do know that he has it in his blood to do it because he was convicted and he served time for doing it. All right, that part we know. <laughs> and he accused her of taking $100 from him. And she said he ripped her braids out of her hair, took her car keys so he couldn't, so she couldn't leave his house. And then after that, he poured alcohol on the woman and, and forced her <laughs> to Damn. pray and then sexually assaulted her. So this is all alleged. I personally, I'm saying this is me, Terry t Bomb, saying I believe that he did everything she said that he did. I believe it. Well, I hope he didn't. And so if he did, he, I hope he gets Because he's a complete, wild. he's wild. That's super wild. So I hope he does get help. If he did something he, like that, yeah. he just, yeah, so your boy, anyway. your boy Brent Favre is still in hot trouble, y'all. It wasn't enough that we uncovered what he was doing with the welfare money down there in Mississippi. Now he's been alleged, like he got a, a nonprofit organization collecting millions and millions, and then sending it over there to his alumni uh, at his school, at his former college. So that's not what he's supposed to be doing with his uh, money from his for his foundation. So now he's in double hot water, and I don't feel no sympathy for you, Brett Favre, sir. I don't. I really don't. So do Brett Favre was still, so Brett Favre had a situation where they would involve him and the, what one of the uh, mayors, the governor, was involved with some uh, fraudulent activity, stealing money from a uh, the lower income. Yeah, I don't like it. People stealing so, checks and stuff. I like hope that. he Millions goes to of prison. Went and, and, and re, got rerouted. So I don't know why they're not blasting it and blasting it. Because well, we man, blasting it. And his white ass need to go to prison. Well, wait, That's how well, I feel. Wait, well, wait, you wait. don't feel like that? Yeah, I believe he should get in some real serious trouble. But we ain't going to say white ass. Well, what we're going to say is our white counterpart, <laughs> our white counterpart need to get reprimanded. <laughs> I had to get my wife. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. So that's what we're going to say. He well, needs I'm to be sorry to be react like that, y'all. I'm just sick of them. Um, getting away with these types of things all these years. And, you know, I'm just sick of it. And so I'm just expressing myself. And, you and I'm sick right. of it. And so, so I'm sick of a lot of uh, our counterparts getting away with a whole bunch of foolishness that's been going on, like identity theft, you know, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, because I'm a victim so, of that, too. So yeah. anyway. No, I um, mean like our identity. I'm a Hebrew. You're oh, Hebrew. you mean like identity that. They stole theft. our identity. I, oh, Not your real license. Oh, okay. Not that part. We're going to deal with that off camera. We'll deal with that later. There's another thing. Let's keep going, Lucy. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to say in closing with the uh, Spotlight News, rest in peace to rapper Coolio. Y'all know who that is. Been spending all my life living in the gangster's paradise. Tell me one more song, Coolio. Live, I don't know anymore. Okay. We'll I sang the one that I knew. Okay. Well, all right. Coolio, Coolio, rest in peace. He's 59 years old. Young, too. He was at his friend's house in L.A., and the friend was like, he was in the bathroom too long. You know how somebody go to the bathroom. Sometimes I'll be like, let me go check on them. And he went and checked on him, and he was passed out in the bathroom floor, and they tried to resuscitate him for 45 minutes, and he was pronounced dead. So I'm not sure what, what was, what's going on. We will give y'all an update, but he's 59. Rest in peace to him. So my cousin Grace, same thing just happened to a family member of mine, but thank God he's still alive. They found him in the bathroom, unresponsive, un, uh, and rushed him to the hospital. So as of now, he's being worked on, and situation is yeah. lo looking a little better. So, so prayers, prayers out to him. But I'm just saying, we had to... Like I say, mental health, we play a lot here. But when we get serious issues, we take it serious. Mental health is that. And so we suffer silently in the black community with mental health. A lot of times you have family and friends that won't reach out, won't say nothing. They'll smile and say, I'm good. They don't always be good. So sometimes pull up. Sometimes you have to check, double check, That's triple right. check. We and gotta, make sure what's good with them. That's exactly right, baby. Um, we take mental health very seriously. We have a quick commercial break and we have um question of the week. All right. We'll be right back. Spotlight over the city.
Welcome back to Spotlight Over the City, you guys. And, man, we got us a beautiful situation today. We got some amazing guests coming up, actually, right after this. So That's right. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about what? Question of the Week is sponsored by Umbrella Therapeutic Services, oh. D.C.'s most reliable and trusted behavioral health organization. They provide community support, medication management, and therapy for individuals and groups. Umbrella Therapeutic Services is available for D.C. residents, Ages 5 through 100. If you are over 100 years old, then it's too bad. So sad for you. Well, Sorry. we always, always hope you can pray, you can meditate, and use cannabis. You okay, if you're over 100, pray, meditate, and use cannabis yes. for mental health treatment. And I that's guarantee you we cannabis got. cures everything. So, yes, it uh, does. Cannabis uh, and meditation. Yes, that's it does. Exactly right. Um, Listen, dear, y'all, oh, question of the week is an opportunity for our viewers and listeners to submit relationship questions to Stan and I. And your questions are uh, appreciated. They actually help us sometimes. They make us laugh sometimes. They and they do. Ma- Sometimes they make us be like, what the, sometimes what they the make you F? Think yeah, too like, about the situation what? that you may be yep. encountering. Because we all go through ish. You yep. know how it is. If you have a relationship question for us and you can ask about our relationship, I think last week they asked about our relationship. Yeah, don't get it too was, much in our business, though. I'll give to- you the tea. <laughs> Yeah, I, out, ask me. I'll tell you. Yeah, don't tell, um, don't send us me. an email, info at spotlightovertheCity.com. So are you all ready? And we don't, we, 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 don't, we never know crazy. what questions we're going to read, y'all. Dante, Let's yeah, I don't know about that. Let's go. Um, dear Stan and Terry, <laughs> <laughs> I am, wait a minute. Dear, I got Dear Stan and Terry, I am struggling through something horrible with my wife right now, and I do not know what to do. I lost my mother about two years ago. And I admit that I went into a a depression for several months. And as a result, my marriage got really rocky. So much so that I fell into the arms of an old friend just because she had lost her mom too. And she understood my level of grief. I cut things off with her because I realized that it was wrong. And I did not want to be that type of a husband. Well, my old friend refused to let me go. She showed up at my house stand and my wife went bananas. She dragged the lady out in our, in, in our driveway. I thought we were back in the 80s for a minute. I tried to restrain my wife, but she found a new level of physical strength that I didn't even know she had. Mm. She eventually let my friend go, and my wife ran into our home. I ran after her. I left my friend out in the driveway. She took the urn. My wife took the urn from our fireplace, the urn that had my mother's <laughs> ashes in it, and she threw the ashes off of our deck. Oh, wait, that's a violation. Keep going. My heart stopped, Stan. I stopped speaking to my wife for a couple weeks behind this. We are gradually now talking again. My old friend has not contacted me anymore since my wife dragged her. But I now feel a way about what my wife did. She went too far, in my opinion. That is not fighting fair. Is this grounds for a divorce even after seven great years of marriage? (laughs) Okay. Aww. So, yeah, so first of all, it, would you guys agree that it's a little crossing line to throw the urn out the damn? You can't touch the urn. Like, that's that's, that's all. I can't wait like, till it's my turn. So, first of all, though, I believe that um, this is, this is kind of. This is tough. Yeah, so um, he was violating her. Yes. Um, He was giving her the, the thing. And um, so it got good to her, and she couldn't cut it off, right? So that's what you call. He was demotized. violating his wife by demotized. cheating, right? So and then she showed up, which means she was really in it. She right? showed up at the house. So that's a major violation, sister. You can't show up at um, the house that you're cheating with the man and all this and that, right? You're gonna not get good results. So then she got dragged. That's what you signed up for. Not unfortunately, that's what happens. And so, um, 
That's where it went left. You can't come to people's house and don't <laughs> get not dragged. Pull Most up. of the time, you pull you up. Been you been cheating with my dragged. husband and you going to come so, to my house? Yeah, don't come to the house. What? Call You're her supposed or send her to get dragged. Something like that. So that's kind of how that went left. So um, you, on the other hand, can't ask for a divorce when you was cheating and she didn't react right. You can't get mad and talk to the husband. He can't get mad and say, I should get a divorce because you shouldn't have responded so harshly. Um, you took it there. So, so you feel like it's even? Fair exchange, no robbery is what they say. I'm not saying I'm condoning it, but you you make it messy when you make a mess. You know what I'm saying? So it got messy, and that was her level of mess. So And the wife said, I'm, I'm, I want all the smoke. So he didn't know that part. Well, here's so. what I think. I think pretty much what you said. Listen, um, if you I, – I understand, like, I haven't lost my mom, thank God, yet, but I understand that there's a level of grief that is incomprehensible when you lose a parent if you were close with that parent, right? And so I understand he was going through grief, and when he was going through, I've heard that when a person is going through grief, it does sometimes mess up marriages a lot, oftentimes. So he said they went through a tough time, and he fell. He he said he fell. This is people kill me. You fell on it. He he. Well, he didn't he, say he fell on it. He said this is what he said. I fell into the arms of an old friend. Yeah, not on it. He fell into the arms. Yeah, but when he fell, she when, fell on. When he fell he into fell her on. arms, he fell into her. Okay. You know what well, that wait. means. Well, well, so what he happened just was he accidentally well, fell, slipped in there. Well, no, see, now when I'm grieving about mama, you got to be there to console me and you got to lock in. Now, you can't get goofy and go out with your girlfriends and be on dumb time. And, and if I'm that happens, there, then he can. Because then, just... then she on my line, you okay, boo? You want me to bring you something? Where your dumb ass wife? Stuff like that. Well, the dumb ass wife dragged you, lady, out into the driveway. Well, so here's that what happened. I'm saying. That did happen. I understand that he he was going through grief, but it, to me, there's still no excuse for you to go and act and, and happen to fall into another woman's arms, which means you fell into her box too. Which that's why she's <laughs> showing up at this at your house now that you want to cut it off. Now you want to be a good husband, and you don't you don't like what you did, and now the wife didn't like that, so she took the urn out of re, out of just frustration and anger and threw your mama's ashes off the deck. But and that's I'm not far. being insensitive. That is far, far. And that's not fighting fair. But listen, now we even. That's and I don't even. think you, you should divorce your wife. You can't throw mom off the balcony. But, well, but outside of that, though, I, I hear what you're saying. You have the right to show up. You got the right to get that tail whooped. I, like all those things you signed and up And I had for. a right to throw the ashes house, off. But that part is off. That's just where we disagree. So I would say you can't throw the urn. Like, I would say that, too. But too now it's done. And you said you don't want to. You don't think he should divorce her, though. Right. Well, he's saying I should divorce her. Right, he's what saying he should divorce his wife because his wife threw the ashes off the balcony. Well, that. I don't think you should divorce her because you can't reverse it either way. Right. So I would say you have to forgive her and then let that be a real tough lesson because you signed up for some foolishness. So yeah. don't be as messy like that. Like, don't be a mess at, yeah. at your house. Clean your mess up. Like, you little moving a little goofy. And so, yeah. I think it's mendable. I don't want y'all to get a divorce. Please work on yeah, it. Yeah, you can work that and, out. And, and, I don't and, think that's grounds for divorce. I think that's a tough lesson, though. Yeah, you know? so... All right, well, we got to move on. We are a little bit behind. We've got our first guest in the building who's been waiting oh so ever patiently. So we will be right back with our first guest, y'all. Yep, yep. Spotlight yep, yep. over the city. Woo Let's give it up. Come on first. Hey.
Spotlight over the city, you guys, and guess what? We got us a plus two in the building, yes, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, you want to do the do. intros? I do. I do. I'm excited. You know, we've been trying to get y'all to here on this show for a while. Ooh, we've been, ooh. you know, we had to do some date finagling and all of that, but we finally but got we y'all out, here. Right? We worked it out. Listen, y'all, I told y'all what we saw when we pulled up in the parking lot rafe today. We're going to do some rafe talk because we've got our new Spotlight family in the building. We've got Randy and Jeannie Stevens from RS hey, Luxury Records in the up, building. Give it, up, give, it up. give it up, y'all. Yes, Listen, indeed. I'm so excited to have both of you here. I want to be able to talk about and share um, your amazing business. Um, let's talk about it. Who wants to tell us about RS Luxury Rentals? Yeah. How did it come about? What do ladies you do? First. Man, we let the lady talk first. Ladies first. Oh, sure How did thing. this whole thing come about? RS Luxury Rentals. So, um, Randolph is an amazing uh, car lover. He loves cars. He loves vehicles. We've always had many of them. Um, and I've basically shared with him that we were not able to drive all of them at one time. So we should just share it and let people enjoy it. And we get to enjoy it as well. Um, And it all started during the pandemic um, when we actually um, purchased a Sprinter van for our own personal use. And then a lot of people kept asking to rent it. So we were just saying, no, no rentals, no rentals. It's private use, blah, blah, blah. And um, then dollar signs went off my eyes and we were like, Oh my gosh! Okay, I'm like this is like a big deal. Like God, it was God, or mm-hmm. it's God to say, That's right. "Hey, this is what it is." That's right. So we basically jumped on board, started running the one sprinter out, and um, Randy is very particular about cars and who drives them and things of that nature. So only he and I can drive them, no one else. But at the end of the day, he decided to. We talked about adding the other cars to the fleet, so we just added the extra five other cars to the fleet and we added on added on throughout the pandemic and it all started during the pandemic so it was all guard definitely wow. um we have four other business outside this one but that's how it all started and let randy pick up from there i may have left yes. some something out so some good things came out for a lot of us during the, during pan- the pandemic during the pandemic I yeah see. go ahead so, randy, so i'll say got? this um she left out some things um <laughs> initially uh, been, i was looking at a sprint van for about maybe two years um and then at that point um a guy by the name of I believe his name was Josh or Justin at uh, um, uh, Ultimate Toys. Uh, we kept going back and forth, and then finally I decided to go ahead and buy one. Initially, it started off as being uh, for the family. But then Josh was like, well, Rain, how would you like to put it in a rental program since you're not going to drive it all the time? So I said, okay, cool, let's, let's do that. And then um, we put it in the rental program, and I think our first rental was like $19,000 or $20,000, the first rental. They had like 30 days. Um, and then about a year, the numbers were good, I decided to go ahead and buy another one. So I bought a second Sprinter van, um, and then from there, 
um, I've always owned exotic cars. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to go ahead and throw in exotic cars too. So um, wow. that's pretty much how it came. It came out of the pandemic, and then we ran with it from there. So, I love so the Sprinters it. were the first uh, addition to the, the business, and then you started to add the luxury fleets. Correct. After that. Exactly. Wow. Right. I love this concept. I love it. And I love that it's you all doing it or Thank us. You. How You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I love to see sure. that. And I love that it's here in, in the DMV. You know, you know, you see a lot of those types of businesses, or at least I have in uh, places like Miami, Miami or L.A. But I you. love that mm -hmm. you all are the trailblazers for this here in the DMV. And um, are there... Are there plans to expand? Like, what's next for you all? Absolutely. Um, we have a location in Miami, and we're planning to put yeah. a couple of spring vans in Miami, uh, along with some cars. Um, and we we just added a new um, a new uh, a new destination, which is which is a new house in in, in Miami. So Jeannie can talk more about that. Wow, Jeannie, what? But wait, what? so I want to go back real quick before we get over to that whole table. That I wanted to ask you: Did you guys use personal vehicles at first? Um, outside of the Sprinter's situation, or did you go and purchase uh, rentals? So all of the vehicles were personal. It all started out as personal. These okay. were a number wow. of vehicles sitting in our garage and driveway, and we couldn't drive them all. So it's all personal, and like I told Randy, like we can't drive them all at one time anyway. We might as well enjoy them and let other people enjoy them too. That's what the insurance is for. I Someone it. drives it, they mess it up, which we try our best to rent to really up class, you know, people that know yeah. how to take care of things, which right. is very important. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much, they were personal, our personal cars. So it's okay. not like we went out and bought them as we went along, we already had them. However, we are in the market of shopping for new cars right now. So you guys need to stay tuned for the reveal okay. of the new. Ooh, of what's next. Something yes. new in the fleet. Yes. So I see, the, I see a big boy outside. I see a Ray, one of my favorites. I like the Dawn, one of my other favorites. Um, what, um, which one of the cars did you guys decide to put out of the fleet first, the personal one, outside of the Sprinter? Um, it was uh, the C8 Corvette, because I was like one of the first ones to have one around here. Okay. And it was the uh, the Bentley GT. Bentley GT. One of my other wow. favorites. Yeah. Was the first two. Okay, cool. Yellow and Bentley so, GT at that. <laughs> okay. Was it convertible? Bumblebee, no. The Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was able to, you took those two, and that was able to start adding to the fleet from the production of those two vehicles and also the Sprinter. Yep. Exactly. What's the most popular rental vehicle that y'all have? Good question. I would say the Sprinters. The Sprinters. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And the Wraith. The Wraith and the Wraith. The Wraith, and the Wraith. Wraith. Okay. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I would imagine, yeah, the Wraith, the Wraith would be, yeah. Um, not, so much the, not so much the Bumblebee. Is it still in fleet? Uh, the, the Bumblebee is sold. So oh, it's sold. sold. Bumblebee, yeah. exactly. What's the Bumblebee, y'all? That was the yellow. Uh, <laughs> the yellow the GT. So the, the GT. Okay. The GT. Yeah, that's the that's the GT like my like our guy Hugh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Y'all yeah. gotta hit me to this kind of stuff. Um. So Jeannie, what what's this up going on now? Like you expanded and doing? I mean, we branching off doing something else do, different. Yeah. What did you say? So yeah. So um, ours luxury is just one of the biz the five businesses that we actually um, run and own. So we have an IT business. We have a facility maintenance business. Um, we also have a online boutique as well as ours luxury rentals. And we just, we're all about health and wellness and we have to stay young and live forever. So we have launched this new product called Genie's Jars. What is and it I'm again? Super Genie's, Genie's Jars. Okay. It's super okay. excited about that. Um, just trying to keep our bodies nice and healthy and doing preventive maintenance is so important for us. Um, we sometimes wait till it's the last minute to try to fix things and you can't always reverse things. So I think it's very important for us to share um, how important it is to eat healthy. We're going to have we can have a balance of things. Eat a little bad, but you got to eat good. You know, God said everything is about yeah. balance in our life. Everything. So we have to have a great balance and this product came um, in honor of my dear mom who passed away from lung cancer at um, 64 years old. Mm, and her name so is Jeannie young. also. Young, wow, so this is a, a, Randy and I, we talked about this product for some years and it was on my heart to say, we got to go out here and spread the word how important it is to eat healthy. So the um, salads in a jar are the first um, uh, product that we're going to launch. It's going to be in vending machines, making it very convenient for people to grab a snack and go. Mm -hmm. um, we even can put something in here for you guys. Like you have that your, nice. you have your, 
your um, interview people here and your guests or what have you. It's like something you can grab and go. People like us who are yes. working all the time and it's hard to just eat healthy mm -hmm. and you don't want to eat fast food because I'm one of those people. I'll go all day without eating just because I don't want to eat bad food. Mm -hmm. But that's not healthy either. So we need to have these machines placed out in different um, stores and retail, which that's in progress. Um, and we're going to uh, we're working towards getting them in the retail stores as well. I love, I love the hustle. You guys are so you guys have Listen. been hustling for a long time together and separately as um as a unit. So I love what you guys are doing. We love our entrepreneurs. Um what's yes, next? Yes, we do. What's next for you guys? There uh, one thing I do want to <laughs> say is what they offer. I'm just sitting here looking like so y'all, if y'all want to use rent one of these luxury exotic vehicles for weddings, birthdays, proms, winery trips, anniversaries, engagements, road trip, airports, uh, trips, um, your reunions, date night. Yes, babe. Date That's night, smart, babe. Right? Hint, hint, hint. <coughs> date. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Date night, yeah. Tailgate, shopping trips, bar mitzvahs. Listen, any, uh, listen, y'all. They are located at the National Harbor Resort. Um, you all want to give out your information or, I, I mean, Jeannie, you can tell them what this is. How to, how, what's the best way for them to book you all services? Sure. Um, of course, a phone call is very easy. 301-615-1545. And you also can look us up on the website. If you want to take a look at uh, the fleet, we also offer an amazing, beautiful three bedroom waterfront penthouse that we selectively rent out. That's gorgeous. You can take a virtual tour of that as well as look Ooh, at still pictures that? there. Um, is it located? Out, it's it's located, located at National Harbor Resort. Florida ceiling windows looking at the Potomac. You can see the Ferris wheel is beautiful. It's the selective rentals. So you have to know you all and somebody else. That's to, right. That's what it is. Guys know spot that's I our personal it's our, it's our vacation right. spot. But um our website is wwwrs luxurycom rs luxurycom Come look us up. We will take great care of you, I promise. I love it. I love, love it. I love, I want love. to add one, one other thing. Um we're also um trying to uh, add a yacht. So Hopefully, I'll be coming up Damn. this uh, I know spring, that's summer. Right. So, so this is what I'm talking about. So, black excellence yes. is what we like to represent. And we have black people in the DMV that's doing some amazing things that people don't know about. Sometimes you don't need to know, but sometimes you actually do. So, um, sometimes that no new friend thing don't, don't work for you. I love our new friends. We have amazing friends. God has blessed us with an amazing platform, and we bring some people together. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing to be able to do so. Can't wait to work with you guys in the future. Yes, Send wait. you guys some Let's clients, some the whole things. nine. Hopefully, yes. we can partner up and yes. uh, do some things Spotlight together. Spotlight over so, the city, yeah, yes. To it, so. Anytime y'all need us for whatever. They said they're adding yachts. You're a part of our Spotlight family. Thank so, you. I appreciate um, it. Thank just you. consider the answer is yes, okay? Thank yeah. you so much for having us. Thank really you all so much for being here. on the healthy product. Yes, y'all give, give it up for our luxury rental. Big boy thing. Big boy thing. I think we should have Mika waiting for us now. So coming up after this next commercial break, we'll have our next guest. We have an author. You know, you guys, I love my author. So yes. right back after this commercial break, Spotlight Over the City. Yes. <laughs>
Back to Spotlight over the city, you guys, and we got us another plus one in the building. You know, I love my authors, so this is something near and dear to me. Um, this lady is not just the author, she's doing some tremendous things. She's a philanthropist, a lot of whole other good things going on. So, wife, you want to do the intro since this is some of y'all girl power? Sure, you, know y'all. you all know how I love black girl magic. I love love talking about giving accolades to and giving flowers while they're still alive to our black amazing women who run the world, y'all. Girls allegedly. who run the world. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. Hey, so our sisters are doing some amazing things. Well, sisters are doing them. some amazing say, things. Yes, so you all, you, please, welcome to our Spotlight family, the lovely, amazing author, too, uh, and mom, wife, a whole, bu- a whole, a whole bunch of stuff. A whole plethora right? of accolades. And she's from the DMV. Yeah. Right here locally. Yep. Y'all give it up for Mika Moore. Author. Yay. <laughs> Hello. Hey, miss. Hello, hello. Welcome to Spotlight Over the City. Thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for you for being a part. So we're going to get right into it. So first of all, let's let's for those who don't know, who is Mika Morris? Yes, girl. Who are you? Okay, like you guys just said, I'm from the DMV originally. I now live in Los Angeles with my family. Um, but I'm, I graduated from Austin Hill High School I'm literally from the DMV. I've lived in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, so I'm a DMV girl. Yay! Um, my whole entire family is there, so if you guys are watching, thank you. That's what's um, up. But I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I have a 28-year-old. I'm a grandma. Um, but I'm a woman who loves women and who loves to empower women. That's exact, that. If I had to just do a one-liner, that's who I am. But yeah. wait, Tamika, I heard grandma. You are what? I am. I, am. I have get out of here. Well, I have a lot of grandbabies, but my my baby girl had she has two babies. <laughs> wow, you look way too young to say I'm a grandma. You yeah, look- I see my gray, but I see I don't see no signs of what you just spoke on. So hey, don't let them say I don't I don't call myself grandma in the streets. I'm just letting <laughs> you guys in on that, but. I... <laughs> I'm a honey. I'm a yeah. honey. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that. So let's I get love right it. into it. You're a part of a phenomenal book. The book is called She Nominal Woman. She Nominal Woman. What a title, right? Yes. Women. So women. how did you even get involved with the project? A girlfriend of mine um, got a bunch of us together during, during COVID. So like you guys said earlier, a lot of things came out of the pandemic pandemic um yeah so she got us together and she she knew all of these women individually it's 23 of us in the book all together and basically it's about women who gave up excuses and made a way through life's most challenging times so each story is about a difficult time in each woman's life but it basically kind of rounds out about how they made it through wow perfect i can't wait to read it so your title um a really solid title means a lot to you. Losing Isaiah, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is this something that you've been thought about prior to? Um, were you interested in the movie itself, the project itself, or is something that just came about later in life? That is a really good question. Um, so Losing Isaiah is the movie that Holly Berry starred in. When my son passed away, um, I just kept hearing in my spirit, I always knew I would write a book about my life because um, it's, it's a crazy one, but um, when my son died, 
I just kept hearing Losing Isaiah as the title, Losing Isaiah, Losing Isaiah. Um, his name was Isaiah, and losing him was just, it was a lot. It was the thing mm. that was supposed to literally take me out. Mm. But. Okay, so so for right there, we're going to table that, and I'm going I'm to I'm piggyback off of what you just said. Losing Isaiah was the title in this book. Um, 107, 107 is the beginning of your story. That's where you start. Let's talk about the story. Let's segue into the story and tell the audience, for those who don't know, um, the story of your son, Isaiah. Okay, I'm going to tell the two-second version of it because I want everybody to go out and purchase the book. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can keep it on. You can keep that book present. You can keep that present. From my um, website is TamikaMorris.com. Um, but the two-second story, it happened in 2005. He was two years old. The day is still, when I think about it, it's just still a traumatic time for me. Um, mm. he, I sent him to his bedroom, and he fell out of his bedroom window. The window was open, the screen was in, the blinds were all the way down to the floor, like he had a, a stuffed lion in it, and he just rocked with his plate, cell phone, and went back through the blinds, through the screen, out the window. So... Wow. Um, but I sent him in there because I was getting dressed. And this was one of those days in my head. I thought, wow, he's two. He should stop seeing me get dressed naked for whatever reason. Yeah. He goes to the room. I hear the blinds hit the wall. And I knew immediately he's in trouble for being in a room in the blinds. Like, but who knew? Right. So that day just rocked my world. But like I said, I have a, mm. um, at the time, my daughter was 11. She's grown now. Um. So I had to keep going. I didn't want to. Like, who? How, right. It's not so you think about, but it shouldn't happen. You shouldn't lose your child. You shouldn't bury your child, but mm. especially so tragically like that. But definitely not. Mm. So for though, it's hard to even say. I understand. I get it. If you haven't had a child that you've lost, you can't understand um, the magnitude of the pain. I so um, for you, being a young person, maybe twenty, twenty-one years old when this occurs. How, what do you do at that point to get your strength back? Like, how do you gather yourself? Okay, it's interesting because I look at what's going on in the world and how death is like a part of every day. Every day we're hearing someone's passing. and It's a lot going on right now in the spirit. Like, so for me at the time, I was 33 years old. Um, he died a week after Mother's Day. Like, I was literally praying over my children at the time that it happened. Like, literally, because I had just went to this revival at this church. And I kept saying, God, like, what is, you, you're teaching me all these things about life right now and about my kids and how I'm supposed to speak over their lives. Like, they're supposed to have a future. And he died. Like, what is this? Um, mm. so in my grief, I really sought God. I read Job and I just started to think, okay, I want Job's story. Um, I just started to relax straight on my faith. Um, this, the hurricane Katrina happened. He died in May. Hurricane Katrina happened like in August, that big tsunami happened in December. And God was just showing me that, okay, you went through one death of one loved one. These people are losing homes, they're losing their lives, they're losing whole families. Like, okay, you can do this because those people are going to be expected to live too. So I just kind of looked for my help from every source. I just, and I, and I got it. I just told God, I never had heartbreak before in my life like that. So, okay, God, you think I could do this too? Then my, my heart felt like it was going to break. Mm. I never felt heartbreak before. So he was like, look, just trust me. And I, I had to. I had wow. to literally trust him for air to breathe. For life. I just like, I felt sick just every single day. And, I, and every day, every day, the pain lessened and lessened and lessened and lessened and lessened. And, and it, each day that it, one day it stopped, I, I couldn't feel it anymore. And I was like, ooh, then I felt guilty. Because I'm supposed yeah. to not be okay for the rest of my life. That's what I thought in the physical. But yeah. in the spirit, God was like, I got you, girl. You're good. You're going to be good. You're going to make it. You're going to have a testimony. And not that you want to have that type of testimony, but he was like, just trust me. Just trust me. And so I started to say, God, if you can do it for Job, you can you can surely do this for me. And I'm happy to say now, you know, my tools were tied permanently. 
Um, I have two beautiful daughters now, you know, since then, um, seven and nine, and who starts over life like that all over again. But, you know, my life is so much, it's amazing, you know, and it's nothing I could have ever dreamed of or asked for myself, but God. So, but wait, Tamika, so your twos were tied, right? After your twos were tied, you were still able to have two beautiful daughters. In vitro. In vitro. (laughs) But then you you had to do. Don't do that. So you (laughs) had... Don't don't give her hope. So you had two 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 beautiful daughters, right? But the, to wrap up your story, because we're gonna run out of time, and I wanna I wanna drive this point home. Um, God is a redeemer, a healer. He's always the one that gives us that extra strength when we rely on Him. But He sent you an angel. Um, he sent you an angel um, at a time where you didn't think um, you would get this reception. Um, not just an angel, a really f- phenomenal person, and. When you lost the death, your son passed away May the 13th, correct? Mm-hmm. And so then this beautiful soul came into your life, and his birthday just so happened, and I don't believe in coincidence, to be May the 13th, correct? Mm-hmm. So you never thought you would be able to celebrate on that day because it's nothing to celebrate on that day. That's a real grim day for anybody with sense. But God is a redeemer and a healer. And he also has a real sharp sense of humor and all kind of other weird things that he does for us that we can't fathom. But this was something that was able to lift you. Can can you touch on that a little bit before we get out of here? Okay, so like I said, my son died May 13th, Friday, May 13th. And, you know, we're, we're spiritual beings. We don't believe in Friday the 13th. But I started to think, okay, God, this is real weird, right? Really, Friday the 13th, May Okay, I meet my soon-to-be ex-husband, and when I meet him, he's, I mean, my, my soon-to-be husband, um, and he asked me when's my birthday, and I tell him my birthday, and he asked, and I asked him when was his, and he says May 13th. I said, well, hmm, one day I'll tell you about that day, because I couldn't stay it at the time of meeting him. Right. Um, and so eventually I told him, and he was like, I said, I lost my son on your birthday, and he was like, wow. He had a son being born the same day that my son died. Mm. Wow. Wow. The same day my son died, he had a son being born on his birthday. And, um, wow. The day that I'm supposed to forever grieve is now the day that we celebrate my husband, my bonus son. And it's no longer a day of pain, it's like a day of celebration. And that's what I wanted to end it on. I wanted to be able to hear that story because um, it's really tough to hear the losses that we take along the way. But um, God always redeems. So thank you for the redemption story. And um, thank you for your life story. I know we only touched on it for a smidget. But um, I appreciate your courage and your strength to come on and tell that story. And make sure you guys hold that book up. Make sure they go get that book. It's phenomenal women, women, but... Um, they can find it on my website. It's Tamika, T-O-M-E-E-K-A, Morris.com. And thank you guys again for having me. Yeah. And thank you. So it's amazing. Take care. God bless. Thank you. Thank you thank for being you a part, so Tamika. Thank you so much. Y'all give it Tamika up for Morris Tamika Morris. Morris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We will be right back with our next guest, Mr. Jermaine Smith is in the building, y'all. Yep, Woo! yep. Y'all keep that same energy. Yep, yep. Yes. yes. Spotlight over the city. Clear. Clear. Spotlight, what's going on? Spotlight, you can follow me at uh, Singer Rob the Goat on IG. I'm Singer Rob on YouTube. A lot more works to go, but this is a beautiful platform, and I'm very thankful. Spotlight over the city, I appreciate you. Let's make it happen. Woo-hoo. Let's go. Shout out to Sip Line Ain't, too. Come 
And the way you got your dress on It got my mind going crazy But it can be a little secret Come on Nobody has to know, baby, baby yeah. They don't have to know, no I got you all hot and ready for the show I'll show a few tricks, don't let nobody know It's me and you, don't close the door Turn the lights down, we about to get grown I got you all hot and ready for the show I'll show a few tricks, don't let nobody know and the way you put your body on me, it turns me on. And them speakers knocking, baby, we don't have to turn it off. And put your hands wherever that you want, because I don't mind. Damn, you so fine. Oh, girl, I want to make you scream. Oh, scream, baby. Between the seats, you and me. Oh, See, I don't want to forget the time that we had. So please don't let nobody know, baby, baby. Oh, oh, oh. they don't have to know, no, no. Come on. Please, baby, I need you. I'll show a few tricks. Got you all hot and ready for the show. I'll show a few tricks. Don't let nobody know. Listen, lady, lady, this is how you feel, fellas. And she just wanna get naked. And I can't fake it. Cause I wanna to. Oh yes, I do. She just wanna get naked. But I can't fake it. Cause I wanna to. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. We got our next guest. We got us another plus one in the building. So I like to call this young, young man unsung hero type oh, of person. I like that. Um, something that people don't know. A lot of people don't know how he rocking. They know him from one thing, but that's kind of where it stops. So today we're going to get into it. Um, you want to introduce wifey? Or? Of course. You know, um, I love, love, again... Black excellence, and I feel that this young man exudes black excellence of for course. many reasons, right? So I'm very honored and, and, and happy to call him Spotlight Family, and I want you all to put your hands together and welcome to the show, entrepreneur, consultant, and a whole bunch of other stuff. A whole bunch of things, yeah, y'all don't Jermaine know. Smith is in the building, y'all. Woo! Well, first and foremost, we did not say uh, C to the E-O of uh, Henry Soul Food Cafe. Is that, is that right? We'll yes, let you yes. cl- so, talk about all so of that. So that's the first thing we want to speak on. That's a big deal because it's a staple in the city. Yes, um, everybody who weird. loves soul food know where you are. Mm-hmm. I've visited you many a time. So um, congratulations on that, first of all. Thank you so much. And thank you for being a part of Spotlight. Yes. Thank you so me. we'll get right into it, Jermaine. How, how did you um, come about Henry Soul Food Cafe? How did that... Um, well, it, it, it started, my dad started it okay. um, in 1968. Um, wow. So I grew up in the business. Um, and then, you know, I didn't want to be in the restaurant business at all. You know, at all? Not at all. Because I, I saw what he went through. You know what Long I mean? Long hours. Long hours, a lot of work, you know, dealing with employees and all that junk. And so I went to college. You know, I went to Howard University. I was a H-U. H-U. Yeah. I was a um, so I was a marketing major there, and I was doing well. You know, I had my first company when I was 18, Smith Communications, which is still in, still in existence oh, wait, to the day. you started early, early. Absolutely. Because I, I didn't, I knew I never wanted to work for anyone. So I've never had a job. So you knew that at 18. You knew. I, at 18. So I, I was I was in high school. I went to H.D. Woodson, and I had a, um, I went to H.D. Woodson, and I had a, you know how they give you a, a job when you get out of, you know, when you get out of 
you get a half a day schedule. Okay. But in order to have a half yeah. a day like schedule, day school, yeah. you got to go to work. That's right. So they knew that my dad owned the restaurant, so they was like, nah, you're going to be getting out of here going in trouble, getting in trouble. So they sent me on the interview. First interview I go on is somebody that my dad knows. So the lady, <laughs> so she didn't even hire me, right? <laughs> so the next job, I got a job at a law firm. Go to the law firm. I get the job. And I'm in this law firm working, and I'm realizing what goes on in corporate America. And I'm seeing how we get treated, mm -hmm. right? So the lady that was the office manager there, they fired her, told her they didn't need her position. Two weeks later, the secretary of one of the other uh, um, lawyers there was now the office manager, and she didn't look like us. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I said, I never want to work mm -hmm. for anybody Again. ever. So I quit that job like two weeks. I w I've been there like six months. I quit it like two weeks later, and I never had a job again. Then I started Smith Communications. That put me through college. Um, oh. And then in 97, um, before I graduated from uh, Howard in 99, but in 97, I got bored because I was making money, mm -hmm. and I was successful to my, to my degree. I was mm -hmm. successful. Right. And, um, and I just was riding home. I had my girlfriend in the car at the time, and I said, I'm going to open that joint right there. That's going to be a restaurant. And like three months later, we were open. And it was the best, like it was the best thing I ever did. It, it changed wow. my life. It changed my life. Cause, so mind you, now you say you wasn't interested in not at all, business. but but I got bored. Mm -hmm. So I, at that time, I had a secretary, I had an office, I was going to school. I was never the guy that hung out. Like so, I didn't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't hang with a lot of people. I was always to myself. But every day, I'm waking up, I'm doing business from my bed. I'm like making phone calls, calling my secretary. Hey, you got this done? You got that done? My checks are coming in. I'm good. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm kind of bored. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was also managing. Um, a comedian at the time. I was, I was hanging with the heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Bowe, at the time. I was also doing some work for them, and so I'm at the time I'm like 22 years old. And I'm I'm good, wow. and I said, okay, I'm gonna open a restaurant. And from the day I opened the restaurant, I realized how much knowledge I had about the restaurant business that was never taught to me. It was just what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it made you feel comfortable doing it and taking over. I was very comfortable. Yeah. I was very comfortable. And I worked every day, like, for the first four years, from 97 till 2000. I never took a day off. Wow. I worked. I would, I would go to Howard. I would get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I would go and get the supplies for the restaurant, get the restaurant open. My first class would be a 940 class. I would stay in school all day from 940 to 330. I would get out of school at 330. Get to my restaurant at four o'clock. Close the restaurant up that night. Start it all over the next day. Wow. So do you hear the work ethic, right? The work ethic. It's not so fast nice forward. Itself. How many years we talking? It's actually been twenty five years this month. Wow. Twenty five. Really? Hey, y'all put yeah, that. Twenty five years. Twenty five yeah. years. Phenomenal. And so this is where most of the knowledge of you stops. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. When I say eighth ranked, what does that remind you of? I'm the eighth top. Eight top soul food chef in the country. I know that's right. Yeah. You can't just read fast this type of information. Yeah. I don't know that you. I, don't, I bet you don't know nobody ranked higher than that. That's right. Y'all know somebody? To touch. You can't yeah. call them. Yeah. And so what I'm telling you is that's a big deal, right? That's a huge deal in itself. So, yeah. to, so, to, so to get a little bit more understanding of who Jermaine really is, outside of the food sector, what's next for Jermaine? What else is you have your hands in? So you mentioned, so I'm going to help you a little bit. I'm going to piggyback. We were talking off camera about something. We were supposed to sit down and we was going to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, I can't do that. We're, not, we're canceling a certain situation that you had because you had to go overseas. Right. What came out of that? Um, so I just came off a tour um, with Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. Um, I managed Comedian Earthquake. And, um, One time for Quake. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, we did a tour over there in um, London. Uh, London, the whole UK, uh, it was absolutely wonderful, um, and so it was. It was good. 
It was good. Wow. So um, these are some of the, the people that you have the privy to work with um, that a lot of people would just die to be in the room with. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So how did you get involved with the entertainment? Because we also know that you're a producer of a lot of films. We won't get into that. But mm -hmm. um, you are behind, you're like the financy behind a lot of the things that we see um, on the big screen today. How yeah. did you get from the food sector to the entertainment sector? The food opened up every door that I ever had. So I would, when I couldn't get in the door, just from, if I had a pie in my hand, the sweet potato pie, that's what I'm known for. If I had a pie, I was in the house. I know, that's I, right. They let me in. <laughs> and so once I got in, I knew how to conduct myself. I knew how to, the difference, like I'll tell people all the time, there are several people that can cook better than me. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's going to happen. Like, because cooking is subjective, right? The difference is, is that I know how to go in the boardroom. I know how to sit at the table. I know how to talk the talk. I know how to be humble and not talk about myself. Like for me, people, they never, they don't see this side because I'm not the one in the room that's saying everything that I'm doing. Right. Um, and so, you know, to add to that, you know, uh, I do own a production company. Uh, uh, we've produced several films. Um, um, you've seen Earthquakes, uh, Legendary, on Netflix that I co-produced with Dave Chappelle. Um, Dope. You've seen a lot of my movies from Secrets to Available Wife to um, Holiday Heartbreak to... Yeah. Uh, to um, I can't remember. Um, uh, 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 I can't remember all of them, but all of them are dope. Uh, and um, yes. yeah, shout out to uh, Mega Minds and everybody yes. else. Mega Mind Media, yes. Um, you guys are doing some dope things. Been doing it for a while. So when we see you and you represent Henry Soul Food Cafe, the reason I stamped this is because a lot of people don't see the diversity. In right. your portfolio, they just know right. you as Henry Soul right. Cafe. Yeah, if, that's just where it started. Yeah, if you're riding down, if you're riding down Suitland Parkway, you look over to your left. That's one of my first um, housing developments that I did. Uh, Stand View Development. My partner, along with Don, 41 homes over there. Uh, I'm now also doing a project in Baltimore. We have a 70 million dollar project that we're doing, partnering with uh, Caesar's Palace. There's going to be a new hotel, amphitheater, uh, production area that goes right with um, the Horseshoe Casino. Um, if you're familiar with the Beacon Hotel in yes. Miami, yes. Um, that's a project we just took on. So um, the Beacon so Hotel is being is being revamped. Uh, uh, there's also a new city center going on in North Miami. We're first up for that. Um, I also own a mental health facility in Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, in which I'm in strong talks right now to do a larger um a larger uh, health facility, mental health facility, along with Steve Harvey there. Um, we also have an investment fund, uh, a real estate investment fund, where we are bringing, we're trying to bridge the gap with entertainers as well as um, athletes. A lot of athletes end up broke. Yes. We don't want to see them end up broke anymore. Okay. We want to put these guys in these deals that they're using their money for anyway, mm -hmm. so that when they retire, they can get the same checks that they were getting while they when were they while they were working. It. Oh my God! Yeah. Um, so that that real estate fund has a lot of people. We have um, Xavier Rose um, just recently signed with the Buffalo Bills. He was with uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Um, we have a, a new NFT company called Tame, which my son runs that because I don't know anything about NFTs, but <laughs> he does. My son, my son runs that, and he has the likeness of them. We just signed. Odell Beckham. Um, yes. We're doing a lot of good things. A lot My of good things. So this is the thing. So this is the most humble guy that I've ever met, right? When I met him, it was so humbling because I didn't have a clue who I was talking to. So when I found out some of the smidget of things that he was involved in, I was in love with the humility, right? I like a humble guy. He wasn't braggadocious. He never talked about what he had going on. He just made phone calls and made things happen on the spot. And so congratulations to you um, Thank you so for much. the humility, um, just the good stock that you were raised from, um, the things that you represent for our city is beautiful, and just yeah. the wanting to see us do better. Absolutely. And I know that Absolutely. for you. I know that that's who you are. Absolutely. And, and so. just, you know, my hat off to you. This is a beautiful studio. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And, and, you know, I tell people, all you have is your word. You keep your word. Mm -hmm. So when you ask me to come, you I didn't right ask here. where it was. Or, exactly. when, when is it? 
looked at my schedule. I'll be there. And yes. showed up. And, and showed and, up. And did what he had to do. Yeah. Now, this guy's fresh wife. off the plane from overseas doing his thing. And he's doing some amazing things, by the way. And I think that you should be applauded for that. You are doing some really amazing things for Thank us so in, in, in a community, not just our community in DMV. A lot of people put on for the city. You put on for the world. Thank you so much. The whole world. Thank you so much. So thank you uh, for that. Where can they follow, uh, tap into you for whatever you Um, got going on Of course, with the restaurant, you can go to Henry Soul Cafe and and come and enjoy a wonderful meal, cook fresh every day. Um, But you can find me at uh, Jermaine Smith. You can find me at Jay the Soul Chef on social media via IG. Um, And just, you know, come in and enjoy. And, And this is what I'll tell people. You're spending money with good ground. Yes. Like, your money does not go to Henry Soul Cafe and stop there. Your money is, I can show you what I do. Yeah. If you look it up, you'll see what I do. We feed probably 100 to 150 people for free every day. Every like, day. Not, not sometimes, like every day. But we don't talk about that because it's not to be talked about. You just do the work. So, you know, your money is going in great places. There are football teams that we sponsor. There are kids that we sponsor. There's there's a lot of stuff that we do that that you should put a demand on the other local businesses that you support to do. So that's why I respect this young man. This is something that's, you don't see this much, the humility and the whole nine. So um, I'm going to end it with just saying congratulations on your future projects. I know they're going to be amazing. Thank you. I'm looking forward to being a part of the blessings that you are receiving because you are a very Absolutely. blessed individual. And um, I thank God for you. Let's give it up one more Y'all, time. Y'all, yeah, yes. as black excellence in the black building. <laughs> Yes, I'm very honored to have you as part of our Spotlight family. So thank well, you. Wait a minute. Speaking Any- of black excellence, my homeboy Dirk done snuck in the building he from Vibe Band. In. And uh, uh Roro in, ha- in the building. I have in the building. He those, laid with in the building. Those, <laughs> you got to see it. Those are some great people back there. You Amazing have some great people. people in the audience. Dirk actually was the one that put us together. Yes. Because um, Dirk will go and tell my business a lot. <laughs> He'll tell it a lot. <laughs> but, but it's cool because, because there are a lot of people that I may not be able to reach or to you know come in contact with so Dirk's a great person Dirk anytime I've ever called on Dirk to do anything he's always been there I think Sean is in the back as yeah, well. My man got Sean. You guys yeah. the first Mr. night. Branch in the building. And, um, and, and like I said, your, your movie's next. His movie's next. Did y'all like, hear what happened? We're going to really do that. We like, got next. So when I no, say God really is amazing, that. though, I don't be playing no games. But I will say this while I'm on live on this camera. I've not known Dirk all my life. But I feel like I've known Dirk all my life. And um, everything about him is black excellence. Everything, how he rocks, the hospitality, Aww. just a solid dude. So my love is always going to be for that guy right there. I'm rocking 100,000%, all the way 100%. So, um, and I love Vibrant. That's an extra. That's so right. I'm going to say <laughs> this. We got to get ready to get to our next guest. Thank you for everybody that's in the building. We got a beautiful audience tonight. Y'all get up for yourselves. Spotlight. Woo! Y'all ready to rock out with Are y'all ready for the Edward closer? Martin Jr., our Are favorite ready? saxophonist. Are you ready? I'm ready, baby. You're looking sexy and cute, too, though. Oh, shut up. You made me want to rub on you do something. I'm a, I'm Please rub on me. We'll be Justin right back. Justin's mad at us because we went over time. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We'll be right back I brought you a hat tonight. Break, and we'll have our clothes in the building. Spotlight over the city. Woo-woo! Yeah, y'all!
spotlight over the city you guys you guys enjoying yourself yeah. yeah man so without further ado i'm gonna get out of the way man i gotta make sure so you ready to rock brother oh yeah definitely so this guy's not he's new he's not new to us this is spotlight over the city family he's rocked with us before he's closed with us before but we loved him we had to get him back and so without further ado let's give it up for my man when edward edward martin jr aj <laughs> what do you say aj edward martin jr in the building let's rock <laughs> 